the energies for us personally here, um, we're looking at, um, the, it seems unsta uh, un unstable, you know? A lot of things happened this year. Um, one of the things we left and um, we left uh, somebody in charge of our dogs and the shaman shack. And um, our dog, this is Lucy, but we had Luna before, right? Her sister, and Luna got killed. And she's she got killed, and she was only like four and a half months old or something. Just a puppy. I mean, she's just five months old. She's massive, but she's just five months. Um, and it's like people were trying to say, oh, no one's to blame, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, yeah, you want to think that, right? Um, but the truth is we left somebody who, uh, uh, who brought drugs into the shaman shack. Right? And it could, you could make any excuses on the planet. I kept asking for her for, to tie up the dog, tie up the dog, and she didn't right it's just like that feeling you have that feeling there's something coming there's something coming it's gonna be we're gonna get hit boom we get hit um we want to trust our kids right we want to trust the people around us but sometimes you know you can't <laughs> so don't right do something else um as it happened um i know when it's uh something is a negative hit you know like a, a war bullet and when something is for the best right now you could say that for whatever reason uh, we got that we took that hit um, for us for me particularly if that hadn't happened it's like this I knew that Luna was a difficult dog um, and I knew that she was aggressive, more than usual aggressive, and that she needed very, very tight um, supervision, right? And that if we didn't become very, very strict with her, she was going to probably bite somebody eventually. Um, and um, she's not like a puppy dog bite, you know? These dogs are bred to kill wolves. <laughs> and uh, bears you know so it was like and I didn't follow that knowing I, I said it I said it to others but I wasn't like uh, assertive enough right and when I was assertive a few times I got attacked so it's like yeah this is not this is totally not worth it right so that's an in that's an in right there um we could have kept her alive but the first opportunity that she had when we were not there, she exited it, exited our lives. Something similar happened to our, our rooster. Our rooster was very protective of all the hens, and he was an amazing rooster. He was really nice. But any other person that he didn't know, if he didn't know someone, he would attack them. <laughs> And um, and my grandchild was coming, my little boy, Arthur. And at one point, I looked at the rooster and I thought about my grandson and I thought, man, you know, you better not attack that little boy. You know, if you attack that little boy, you're chicken soup, you know? And he looks at me like, I'm going to protect my girls, you know? Anyways, again, we were out of the house and he had a big fight with a coyote he took big fights and he protected his girls he saved them but he died so when i looked at that i thought hmm that's interesting because we hadn't left we had left just for the day but the frequency was um he had his fulfillment of his defending right um when i spoke to somebody and i said our Tootsie, our rooster got murdered. He, I saw his face, and even now it's like, don't you dare say that about me. I, I died in battle. I had an honorable death, and I protected all my girls. So don't ever say I was murdered. I was not murdered, right? And it's like, whoa, okay, 
<laughs> chill out man <laughs> it's fine yes you did i totally acknowledge you had a you know an honorable death as a warrior and as a protector and you protected your girls and they're all still alive because of you thank you so this is the type of energies we're co-creating with our animals with our people individuals things like that right um if we want to push through a co-creative experience knowing that there's weaknesses in the environment then those weaknesses are going to break it's, things are going to break right as it happens this one uh, the one that thinks that she can sleep on the sofa <laughs> we're calling her lucy uh, because we keep calling, calling her luna they are so different like they look the same ish but their personalities are radically radically different for example um when we took luna out if she saw a dog she would go ballistic you had to literally hold her to control her wanting to kill that puppy dog right that other dog with this one she was there was a dog up, up in the marina today and the dog's back went up right it was being aggressive went over to luna to lucy and lucy just smelled him right like saying hi and you know i'm lucy who are you and i'm like gosh that is such a different dog um and it's like yeah we wouldn't she fits our personalities a lot better right <laughs> rather than having a killer dog <laughs> that you can't you have to control all the time we have one that yeah you do have to control her because she will bark and she will probably maybe i don't know if she'll attack i don't think so but um you have to introduce her to people and stuff because she's so big she makes people afraid um but she's friendly she's friendly to people she's friendly to dogs you know she's super gentle all the time um, she's very loving and she likes to hang out with you rather than the outside you know running in fields so it's like sometimes when you go through a situation that um, the vulnerabilities have been um, broken like the broke through things broke through through your vulnerabilities if you stay at a high frequency level and you stay out of the blame and this and the other and whatnot and you make adjustments right you become stronger like I told Larry tell those kids to that the shaman shake is a drug and alcohol free place for a reason not just because I don't like the smell of weed, right? Or because, you know, I don't know about alcohol, whatever. It's not just because of that. It's because of a mystical reason, right? It's like, yeah, if you drink a glass of wine a week or a bottle of beer a week and you think this is perfectly fine, they don't call it spirits for nothing. That's all I can tell you, right? And people who drink don't talk about their demons for nothing. They are they open doors, right? They open doors. Now you may be very strong, and you don't allow those doors to uh, hit you, right? And that's fine. But be aware of it. Be fully aware of those vulnerabilities. And the same with drugs. I am yet to meet a drug addict that is not covered in demons. <laughs> And by demons, I mean low frequency entities, okay? So it's just an easy word to use. Um, I don't, I'm not um, like part of any religious uh, group. So, you know, there's lots of definitions of demons. For me, it's just a very low frequency entity that usually feeds off the person's emotional body. That's why they can't attach to them. Uh, especially fear, anger, righteousness, um, frustration, sadness, despair, all that type of energies are candy to these entities. So they, do, they go for it. But anyways, this is some of the aspects of um, how indulging in low frequency stuff can bite us in the ass. Okay? So pushing through 
keeping a dog that wasn't compatible with us was gonna hit us and it did um and you know um for me to indulge in the thought of staying in california so i can be with my children and my grandchildren it's a vulnerability it's a mommy thing right it's like they can come here <laughs> they can move over they really can okay and they've been given lots and lots of chances to do that okay especially the youngest one and um he chose not to right he fought it fought it fought it and he didn't and since i decided you know what um okay i'm not gonna fight anymore i'm just gonna but i really want to be with you now he's fighting to come and live with me so it's it all like resolves itself in the end he may or may not i don't know if he's gonna figure it out because one of the things that distracted me both emotionally, mentally, and financially a year or so ago, I can't remember, maybe since for two or three years, cost us a lot of money that we don't have or didn't have at the time. But anyways, was a custody battle for my youngest son. We fought and fought and fought for it, for him to come and live with me. and. Um, against all logical reasons and even the people in the in the air in the in the room the other attorney my ex everybody was shocked when the judge says no he stays with his father <laughs> right everybody was shocked like seriously shocked it was totally illogical um but anyway it happens right so i was looking at it going okay um, so in that little fight, big fight, there was three people involved. There was myself, there was the father, and then there was the child. The father and I had opposite positions, right? So the only one with a say, the only one that held the vote that decided it was my son. So when I looked at that dynamic, I said, you know what? I'm not going to fight for this anymore. This is ridiculous. And during this stay in California, I said to him, listen, Brett, I said, um, uh, oh, he said, mommy, I want to come and live with you now. I've changed my mind. And I said, listen, I'm not going to fight your father over this. So if, if that's what I know that before you wanted your mommy and daddy to fight over you. And that's why all that happened. And he says, you know, blah, blah, blah. Says, what, what was that he says no no i wasn't saying no i said i was saying yes i did i did do that right so he knew he was conscious of it where and where of doing it. he's 12 12 years old but he's he's very knowledgeable about stuff anyways um and i said well if that's what you want because it feels to me that that's what you're trying to generate here because he was telling me horrible things about his dad and being angry and mommy take him to court and all these other things you know i said but i'm not gonna fight it's like i'm not gonna fight for you you're gonna have to fight for this yourself i'm gonna support you that's true but if you want to come and live with me you're gonna have to make it happen because this is not gonna be about mommy and daddy fighting again because we're not gonna i'm not going to so you're gonna have to manifest it you're gonna have to figure it out somehow manage to get yourself over to live with me and you're powerful, you're able, you're capable, you can do this. If you really, really want it, you're gonna make it happen. He says, okay. So he's been working on it, right? And we'll see what happens, right? <laughs> but that's the type of uh, thing that we have to be aware of coming forward because when we look at the split, we look at the separation of the light dark paradigm and an expanded light paradigm um we have a lot of co-creations happening with other people and some of them are not going to come with us 